Today I'm going to show you how to do this animation of the former Soviet Union turning into these 15 independent sovereign states. If you want to learn more about making map animations, check out my premium courses which are linked in the video description. First I'm going to create a new map comp here that I'll rename Soviet Union. I'll click next and I'll grab the Universal Raster Imagery Profile. And now I will go to the Effects and Presets panel and search for the Hue Saturation Effect. And I'll drop that directly on my map comp. And then I'm going to bring the saturation to negative 100 and we'll bring the lightness maybe up to like the 50s. Okay, now I've got this nice light base map. Now for this animation, I'm going to be using this Wikipedia article as my guide. Specifically, this post-Soviet States article. You can see an image right here. I basically want to recreate this as an animation. It's showing the boundaries of the former Soviet Union, and now they are broken up into these 15 member states. And if I scroll down, I have this embedded spreadsheet. So I'm going to use different data points in these columns to drive my animation. So the first thing I want to do is copy and paste this data into my own spreadsheet so that I can sort it and kind of have a little more control over it. So I'm just going to click down here and drag up so I can copy all of these cells and I'll do command C. And now I'm going to go over to Google Sheets. You can use any kind of spreadsheet software you want to use and I'm going to paste this information into the top cell here. And there we go. Now I've got this data. And you know what, with all this selected, I'm just going to select format and clear all the formatting. And I'm going to go to view and I'm going to freeze the top two rows so that when I resort these, it won't sort these top two rows. Now I want to download all of these countries inside of GeoLayers as map features. And I'm going to be using this spreadsheet as a reference as I do this, kind of like a checklist. So I'm going to right click on the country column here and I'm going to insert a new column to the right. Let's just move this and now I will call it map feature and again I'm just going to select this whole column here and I'm going to insert some checkboxes and now I'm going to go back to C column here and I'm going to sort this A to Z so that it alphabetizes all these countries. Okay this is set up and ready to go now I'm going to jump back over into the GeoLayers panel and there are a few different techniques to actually get these countries as map feature polygons inside of the panel. The easiest way is just to use the keyword search up here. So if I do a keyword search for Armenia, for example, you'll see it pop up here. And now if I click on this little button, add to browser, that will give me my map feature right here. Now, this can be a little bit tedious, even with just 15 records. For example, our next country here is Azerbaijan. So if I come up here and try to search this and I don't get the spelling exactly correct or I don't type it in fully, it's not really going to show it to me, which is kind of annoying. So I have to come back over here, copy it, and then paste it. And now I can download it this way. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So if you're working with more than just a handful of records, this isn't the best method. So another way that you can do this is to click on this little plus icon, add features to browser, select download features, and you can go ahead and grab all of your countries right here. That's going to give you all the countries in a feature collection. And if you open it up, they're not really organized. So if you click on feature properties with your feature collection selected, you can sort the features by name. And now you can quickly come in here and pull these out. But an even better way is to click on this little icon, filter view, and then you can start to zoom in to where these countries are loosely located and it's going to quickly filter these down. So we know we want um, this one, we want Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Russia, and I can grab these and move them out of the feature collection. And actually let me turn off filter view because what we want to do is we want to create our own entirely new feature collection. So I'm going to grab all of these and with these selected click on the folder icon, which is Add Feature Collection, and I'll rename this Post-Soviet States. And now I will look at these, and what, what I can do actually is just quickly sort these features by name. And now as I grab these and put them into this collection, I'll go back and I will quickly check these off as finished, just so I know that I've got all of them. So now I'm going to quickly go through this process and get the rest of them. And I'll speed up the video so you don't have to sit through all of it. All right, according to my checklist, I have all of these countries as map features, and they're in this feature collection. So now I'm going to grab the country's feature collection and just delete this one. There we go. Now we've got our data. 
Now I actually want to be able to add the independence date as a new feature property to all of these features. So if I come back over here, you can see we've got this row for independence dates. So to do this, I simply need to grab the feature collection, select feature properties, and then do export properties to CSV and click save. And now make sure that you click got it here and then apply. Now I'm going to go back to my Google sheet here and I'm going to select file, import, upload. And now I can simply drag and drop this CSV that I downloaded. And I'm going to insert this as a new sheet. And the first thing I want to do right away is select view, freeze one row. And I want to make sure that these are sorted exactly the same way as my original sheet that I took here from Wikipedia. And it is because these were sorted alphabetically by country, which is the same case here. So all I need to do now is right click, insert a new column, and then just type in independence, and then come back to the original sheet here and grab these independence days, grab all the cells, copy them, and then I can paste them right here. And I can quickly double check these, and I may even want to format these. So I'll go to format number, and I'm gonna select date, and actually, I want to format this date in a very specific way. So let's format it like this right here. Okay. Now I'm going to go to File, Download, and we will download this as a CSV. And I'll come back to Adobe After Effects, and I'm going to select the feature properties of this feature collection again. And now I will import the properties as a CSV. And here we have our updated one. It's asking us what the match property is, and it's actually has a match property that it applied when I exported this. And now if I grab one of these and go to Feature Properties and scroll to the top, you should be able to see the new independence feature. Oh, it's all the way here at the bottom. There we go. And now what this means is I can grab the feature collection again and I can go to Feature Properties and I can actually name these by their independence. So click on this and click Apply. And there we go. Now I can go back and sort these by name and it should put these in chronological order. There we go. I'm pretty much ready to draw out these map features and I wanna go with a Soviet red color. So I'm actually gonna come over here to the Soviet Union Wikipedia page and I'm gonna actually grab the flag because I wanna use the symbology in the project. So if you click on more details, you can actually grab the original file here which is a vector file and then right click and save this page as an SVG. And then once you've got that, you can open that up in Adobe Illustrator and save it out as a .ai file. That's because SVG format is not going to directly import into Adobe After Effects, so that's a little bit annoying. Okay, now I've got this AI file. I'm gonna drag it and drop it in here, and we can just bring it in as a merged layer of footage. And now if I drag it and drop it directly over here, I can right click and select Create, Create Shapes from Vector Layer, and that's gonna break these into these vector components. If I open up the shape contents, you can see I've got different groups here. And if I turn off group four, I've just got this symbol isolated here, which is really, really cool. And I can also sample this red color for my layer style. So I'm gonna click on here, and now I have essentially the hex code for this. So now if I go up here to these layer style Presets, I can click on Add Style, and I'll call this one Soviet Red. Click on the fill, and then just paste in this hex code, and there we go. Now we've got our Soviet Red. And I'll probably want to draw this on with a blend mode, so I'm going to switch this to Multiply. So it will automatically draw out with the Multiply blend mode selected. All right, I'm almost ready to draw these layers out. However, I don't want these to draw out and be named via these dates. So I'm gonna go back to the feature properties. I've already chronologically ordered them here. So now I can just switch the name features by back to auto, and that will give them their country name. And I still know that you know now these are organized in the order that they declared independence. So now I will go up here to this menu, and I wanna make sure these parameters are set as I want them to be drawn out. So simplify geometry, I'm gonna set that to current zoom, and I want them to be drawn out as individual layers. Now I'm ready to draw these out. 
Here we go. All right, these were drawn out. And now you want to take note of two things. First, the fact that these were drawn from the bottom to the top. So when we animate these chronologically, we are starting from the bottom, which is Lithuania. Also, we have all these layers with a plus one in the label. This has to do with the setting in GeoLayers where it's essentially drawing a duplicate across the date line. So this is perfectly fine when it comes to Russia because you see right here, we actually need this for the Russia layer. So if I toggle off the visibility of Russia plus one, we lose the eastern tip of the country. So we need this for Russia, but for the rest of them, we actually do not need them. So what I'm gonna do is we can actually just, uh, let's just get rid of all of them except for Russia, so we'll just delete all these layers. And now I'm gonna go up to the GeoLayers Preferences menu, and if I scroll all the way somewhere down near the bottom, there's this little checkbox here, which says Duplicate Layers Across Dateline. Just toggle that off, and now I can draw all of these out again with Russia deselected, and now we'll have just these layers, which is great. Okay, now I've got all these new layers with no duplicates. I'm gonna grab Russia, and I'm gonna put it back in its order, which is just below Kazakhstan here. And okay, now these are ready to animate. But first, I'm gonna take care of this flag up here. So what I wanna do is, I'm gonna actually delete the original here, and I'm gonna open up the shape layer, open up shape contents, and turn off the visibility of group four, which is our flag color background. Now I just have the symbol. I am gonna right click it, go to transform, and select center anchor point in layer content. And I'm gonna hold shift and just scale it up via this bounding box. Now I've got this symbol nice and large in the middle of the map here. And I'm gonna go and just change the label color so we don't get this mixed up with our country polygons. And I gotta make sure to actually parent this to the map comp now, set it to 3D, and now I can lock it. Now, how are we gonna animate all of these layers. Once again, we're going chronologically from the bottom layer to the top. Now I wanna do a very simple opacity animation, going from something like 100% opacity down to 25. So I'm gonna grab all of these layers, I'm gonna hit the T key to bring up opacity, then we'll go to the beginning, we'll just add an opacity keyframe, and then we'll go to maybe one second, and bring these all down to 25. So if I full screen this, you can see now we've got these all animated, but we, an we wanna stagger this animation of the keyframes. So how do we do that? Well, there's actually a feature under the animation menu. If you go to keyframe assistant, there's something called sequence layers, and this will essentially stagger your layers, but it's gonna do it based on where they're trimmed. Like because these are not trimmed at all, it's gonna sequence them from the end of the trim to the out. So we wanna trim these back to just where the keyframes are located. So I still have all these layers selected. To trim them back, I hold the control modifier key and hit right bracket. And that's gonna trim these straight down here. And now I can use this sequence layers. Now before I use this, uh, just be aware that this is gonna sequence in the order which you select the layers. Now again, we wanna start with Lithuania. So I'm gonna grab that first, hold shift, and then grab Kazakhstan. Now I can go to animation, keyframe assistant, and go to sequence layers. By default, it will not have any overlap. I wanna put some overlap in there because otherwise it'll be a little bit too boring. And in fact, I want it to overlap quite a lot. And you can see we have 25 frame per second time base. So I wanna do something like 20 frames overlap. Okay, now I'll click okay. Okay, so now we've got a nice stagger. I'm also gonna grab all these keyframes and do F9 to give me some easy ease. Now, if I turn off the full screen here, you'll notice that we do have an animation, but since we have all these layers trimmed, it's giving us this weird, you know, maybe, maybe that's something that you want, but I don't want that. So I'm going to bring my playhead all the way back to the left, and to trim this back, I'm gonna hold control and hit left bracket, and now it trims all the layers back this way, and we're bring my playhead over here, hold control, and do right bracket, and now we should have a proper animation here. It's gonna start fading these out chronologically until we have just Kazakhstan at the end, and then it goes all the way to this. Okay, very cool. Now at the end here, let's say we're going for something like an eight to 10 second animation. At the very end, we can bring all of these back up so it loops. So now I'll just add another keyframe for all of these. Let's have it animate back up to 100. Okay, there we go. 
And now I'll bring the playhead over here, hit N to close off the work area, and then maybe hit U to close all of these off. All right, very cool. Now I wanna draw out the actual boundaries and borders so I can see these countries before they start to fade. So throughout the entire animation, you'll be able to see the borders. So the first thing I wanna do is create a new layer style. And I wanna create like a black, okay, here's one, this might work. Let me look at the actual style. So if I click edit style, this is set to five pixels. I'm gonna bring this down to one. And we have this nice black color. And I also want to make sure that I've set all these parameters up. I want to simplify the geometry based on the current zoom. I want to have auto stroke width selected just in case I want to do any kind of zoom maneuvers. Uh, these strokes will look good at any zoom level. And I don't want these to be individual layers. So I'll go ahead and leave this deselected. And as of right now, I don't want these in the map, inside of a, their own map comp or the existing map comp. I want these to be on top of all of these country polygons. Now, with this selected, I'll grab the entire feature collection and I'm gonna go ahead and draw this out. Okay, this is looking good. Now I've got a completed looping animation. However, I have noticed a few errors. I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but let's go through them. First of all, when I drew out uh, the Russia stroke here, you'll notice that it didn't duplicate across, so I've got this little error right here where we don't have any border here and it just kind of cuts off. So we need to fix that. Also, if I look at the keyframes of my two Russia layers and Kazakhstan, I'll hit the U key, you'll notice that these are staggered as well. So we have the same Russia polygon and these are staggered to animate on. So I just need to grab all of these and shift them over because I do not want these two layers to be staggered. And in fact, I probably just want to retime the whole animation out just to tighten it up a little bit. And one other error that I notice is the fact that if we look over here, Crimea is part of Russia. So this isn't a really like a political stance on my part. This is just actually the way that natural earth provides the boundaries, the admin boundaries of this particular polygon. So they have a disputed borders policy where by default they will provide their borders uh, de facto instead of de jure. So what that means is de facto is defined as who controls the area on the ground as compared to what international law recognizes this area as. Now if you want to draw this out via different POVs or if you want to draw it out as du jour, one thing that you can do is you can click over here, go add features to browser, and you could click download features, and there's a disputed areas natural earth global data set. And if you click on this and you navigate around, you'll notice that we have Crimea as its own polygon. So I could come back here, grab Ukraine, merge it with this, and just redraw it out and subtract it from Russia to create my own polygons. You'll also notice that there's all these other disputed boundaries that are very much at play when uh, the Soviet Union dissolved these different areas. Um, so if you wanna draw out a more detailed animation, um, you can use these polygons as well. Okay, so here is my final animation. Now there's a couple of different finishing touches I could add to this. I probably wanna come back and add some labels to the left here and have like some text animations of the names of these countries like animating on as the actual country polygon animates on. That might be cool, but I do like this like minimal type look. As always, if you wanna get these project files, you can head over to my Patreon page. I will put them up there. And once again, I have a new Battle Maps course that I just released, and it's gonna be on sale through the end of May. So if you wanna pick that up, go check out the trailer, go check out the landing page, which I'll link to in the video description. And if you wanna get that, it's gonna be $100 off until the end of May. I also just created a bundle deal, so if you don't have either of my courses, you can actually buy my GeoLayers Masterclass with the new GeoLayers War Battle Maps Masterclass and uh, have a pretty significant discount. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.